Hello, hello everyone. It's Maddie with Spectrum Art Creations. And today we are going to be making this super fun little project. It is fun because it is easy to do. You can use your scraps. You can even use your single sided paper and you can use it two ways that I can think of. Of course, you guys will probably think of more ways, but I can think of two, which is for journals, which is what I'm going to be using it for because it's going to have all kinds of fun flips and interactive features. Plus it is going to also have uh, lots of journaling spots and photo spots. So you can add photos, you can add poems, you can do all kinds of stuff with it and just journal in it. But for card makers, it is a perfect card to make and send off as well. So it's got more than one purpose, which I love, and I'm sure you guys will think of more. So let's look at what we're going to be making today. This is my prototype. So this is um, what I've created um, as a very basic to kind of just make sure that all of my measurements were correct. It is super fun because it's got a magnetic closure. It opens up to reveal some journaling spots. Then you've got journaling space as well here. Inside is a tucked bookmark and it opens up to reveal even more journaling here and also a tag. Plus, as I plan to use it, is that I'm going to be adhering it on three sides and then creating another you know, pocket. Um, you can also make the base as a uh, full card and then you can have it open this way and it would become even more, you know, flips and journaling opportunities as well. So again, I'm sure you guys will put your own twist onto this. Now, this is starting our new series, which is going to be called Try It um, Tuesday, in which we're actually um, gathering inspiration from either, well, anywhere online, whether it's just a general search or Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, you name it, um, YouTube, we are, you know, inspired by others. And then of course, we're giving it our own twist, which again, I hope you will too. So our inspiration this week was from Cindy Lee B Designs. I found this post in on Pinterest. And as you can see, it is a card. It is similar, but we've taken it to the next level by adding a magnetic closure and by adding additional pockets and adding a bookmark pocket and so on, so on. So this was the starting point for our inspiration for the project for today. So, and again, thank you to all those who post uh, to inspire the rest of us. So let's go ahead and talk about what we're going to need the supplies now that you know what we're making. I want you to gather up all your supplies and we can make this together. Some things of course are optional and some things are not. So I will go over the stuff that is not optional first. The first thing you're going to need, well, let's put this off to the side because we know what we're making. The first thing you're going to need is going to be two pieces of A4 um, cardstock, plain color. This is just black. On this one, I used um, a brown. So just pick a color that coordinates with your project. Or again, the first one can be your prototype. So just pick whatever you have handy uh, to try it out. And then you can make a decision as to, oh, okay, now I get how this works. Now I want to use this instead. But two pages of A4. You're also going to need some decorative paper. Again, it can be single-sided. This is this one was a single-sided collection. This is the one that I am going to be using primarily. This is the lovely Alchemy by Stamperia. If you're not familiar with this collection, it is gorgeous and we have it in stock. So I am going to be working with this one. Again, it doesn't have to be double-sided. It can be a single-sided collection but oh my goodness, the colors on this one, right? And the patterns, I think it's gonna work great. And the nice thing about the project too is that you can alter the size. So once we make our first one, uh, you can go ahead and just change the uh, measurements that I'm gonna be giving you and shrink it down or, you know, again, um, go up in size, whichever size you prefer. 
But see, it even comes with the bookmarks. That's kind of my inspiration for that too. Super fun. So I'm going to be using that. You pick whatever decorative paper you want. Again, for the first one, if you want to just use your scraps, that would look so cool because it would be all like mismatched. I love that. So do pick your decorative paper. We're going to need a paper trimmer, of course, which because we're going to be cutting um, all of our mats and stuff. So um, get your paper trimmer as well. You're going to need a ruler. OK, in my case, I am using our awesome um, ruler with the eighths, the sixteenths plus the zero uh, level. Um, so I'm going to be using that one. You're going to need a pencil. You're going to need adhesive of your choice, whether you use a tape runner or liquid glue, whatever you prefer. You're going to need a scoreboard. OK, uh, and then we're going to also need the Spectrum Art Creations or SACS for short um, precision angle corner tool. This is optional. This helps you to cut your angles. So when we're making all of our angles, they will match and line up perfectly. If you do not have this, again, we have it in store, but you might choose to do it freehand. I'll show you how to use this tool later on if that is something that you would like to do, or you don't have to do angle cuts at all. You can just leave your tag straight, right? So that's optional. If you're going to be inserting eyelets, you're going to need a crop -a dial and you're going to need uh, some eyelets as well. Again, totally optional. Those are optional. Um, in addition, you're also going to need uh, some inks if you want to ink up your edges, right? So that's up to you. If you want to distress and create that look, you can grab your inks. Um, if you want to create the magnetic closure, it isn't necessary, but it does hold everything kind of nice. And especially once you start adding photos, you want to have, you know, uh, you don't want to have this kind of flip flopping. But again, once it's in a journal or if you're mailing it in an envelope, it should be fine. But if you do want to add the magnetic closure, you'll need some magnets. And then the last thing that is optional is creating a notch, whether you want to notch both or just the one, then you'll need a circle punch to create that notch or 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 something to to trace right with your pencil and then free hand cut it that's it so it's very basic this is all optional really this is what we need right here it is super basic uh just some paper a ruler a pencil a trimmer and a scoreboard so i'm sure you guys have all that so let me clean up the desk now that you guys can pause here go gather up your supplies and then we're going to get ready to um get the measurements for the pieces that we're going to need. So let's clean up and come right back. Okay, so here's my thought for today. Rather than spending the time cutting our pieces, I'm going to give you all of the measurements so you can go ahead and cut and then pause and then cut the decorative mats and pause again. And then we're going to spend our time putting it together because that's the fun part anyway, right? The decorating. So let's go through the pieces that you're going to need. And this way, again, you can take your time, make sure you, you know, measure twice, cut ones, and we will avoid any kind of mishaps. So first, we're going to start with all of the bases. That is a solid cardstock that we're going to need for all of our bases. The card base, which is this piece right here, right? This main piece right here which encompasses this as well, is going to be 10 inches wide by seven inches tall, okay? So 10 by seven. Again, really doesn't have any orientation because it's a solid um, piece of cardstock, but if you're not using solid, I'm gonna give you the width and the height as well. Then we have the small one. And you can write these on a sticky or on a piece of paper and then go do all your cuts and like i said come back the smaller card which is this one right here okay this one is going to be six inches wide by four and a half tall so again six by four and a half then we've got the base for the bookmark the bookmark is going to be one and three quarters wide by seven and a quarter tall okay 
And then last, we need the mat for this small tag right here. And that small tag is going to be two and a quarter wide by four and three quarters tall. Okay, so that's going to be the bases. So I'm going to take those, put those off to the side, and then we're going to talk about the decorative mats. Again, if you want to pause right here and go cut those first before all your measurements get all jumbled, go ahead and do that. And then we'll do the decorative. Or if you just want to jot them all down and then do all of your cutting at once, that's fine as well. Okay, I'm going to pick these up. Feel free to pause here and bring in the decorative mats. Okay, let's talk about the decorative mats that we're going to be needing. Now, again, they can be single-sided and always keep in mind your orientation because your paper might have orientation, such as like this one has a little bird here, this one's got branches. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, most of mine are not orientation sensitive, at least for this one. Again, I wanna spend more time putting this one together and then the alchemy one together um, then doing all the cutting on screen. So let's go over the measurements that you're going to need for your decorative mats. The first one is going to be five inches wide by six and three quarters tall, okay? Now, if you want to decorate the back, you're going to need to cut two of those. That's if you're making a card, right? If you're using this inside of a journal, like I'm gonna be doing and gluing this down anyway, no one's gonna see the back. So in that case, all you need is to cut one of those. Okay, then we need the mats for our smaller card, this one right here. We're gonna need one for the front, which is this green striped one. Then we're gonna need two for the inside. Again, they don't have to match. Feel free to use all of your scraps and mix and match them because that would be so much fun. Um, I cut one for the front and then two matching ones for the inside. Those are going to be two and three quarters wide by four and a quarter tall, okay? Three of those. I'll do it this way so it's easier to see. Then we're going to need covers for the bookmark pocket okay this little flip right here that holds our bookmark we're going to need those covers here again keeping in mind orientation if you've got birds or flowers or butterflies um, you're going to need two of those and they're going to be two inches wide by six and three quarters tall okay two of those one for the inside outside again feel free to mix and match and then we're going to need um, the mats for our inside tag for this one right here. For that tag, we're going to need two pieces because we're gonna do it on both sides that are two inches wide by four and a half inches tall, okay? And then finally, we're going to need, of course, our decorative paper for our double-sided bookmark. And for that, we're going to need two pieces. And those two pieces are going to be one and a half wide by seven inches tall. Oops, seven inches tall. Okay. And that's it. That's what we need in order to uh, decorate our awesome project. So once you've got those cut and the bases cut, then we can go ahead and start putting this together one step at a time. So I will um, clean up. I'll let you guys go ahead and pause and then we're going to come back and put this together really, really quickly. Um, but of course, with some little tips on how to make sure that your magnet is adhered properly and then uh, all those awesome little angles and whatnot. Okay. All right. I'll see you guys in just a bit. Okay. Now, we're going to be cutting some angles. So we're gonna be using the Spectrum Art Creations um, angle uh, precision tool. There are two of them available, two different versions. They allow you to cut angles from one quarter of an inch all the way up to two inches um, angle. So if you're working like on a larger project and you need to cut a two inch uh, angle, you can do that. And if you're working on something really small and you need a quarter, you can go um, with that one. But again, this one goes from one quarter to one and a half 
three quarters and one inch. It allows you to cut your angles, all of them perfect to match always without any issues at all. So what we do is we're going to choose the one half, right? The half, and we're going to put that on there like so. All I'm doing is lining up my top and my side and then my scissors and it acts like the perfect guide to just cut that corner and then bring it over to the other side and as quickly as that, do it again and it's a perfect match. No more having to try and grab, I remember I used to try and grab these little things and try and line them up and then cut, oh yeah, no, that's a nightmare. So we're not doing that. We're gonna cut those at the top then we're going to bring our mats and we're going to do the exact same thing. Look how quickly we can do this perfectly every single time. Like so. Okay, and now we've got those that match. We'll do it again. Again, check your orientation if it matters using the half again. And of course we have these in store available. Okay, so we've got those done. We're not gonna glue them down just yet. We're gonna leave them like that. Then we're going to bring the other one, which is that other um, tag, this one right here. And we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna use the exact same angle so it all matches beautifully. Again, we want to create that uniform look so it is pleasing to the eye. Like so. And then, of course, this one does have an orientation, so I'm going to trim the top. And when I design these, by the way, I design them with a hole there at the top so that you can put them on a string or, you know, hang them. Uh, you can put them on a um, ring, also a metal ring if you'd like, because they are acrylic, which allows you to also see through where you're cutting. So that's going to be that one. And then this one will be my back. And again, this was just a piece of scrap from where I cut those other pieces. And now we have those ready. As simple as that, they are all perfect. No stress, no strain on your hands, done. Okay, now we're gonna decide if we want to create a um, notch on the pocket, right? So if you are going to be creating a notch, we're going to be getting our uh, circle punch. I decided to use a one inch. So again, up to you. Let's go ahead and while we're doing that, let's go ahead and work on these two right here because we are gonna need to do some scoring. Remember I mentioned you needed a scoreboard. Okay, so we're gonna grab the larger base and we're gonna put that on our scoreboard on the 10 inch side. So 10 inches this way. We're going to grab our stylus um, tool or you know, if you have a bone folder, whichever one you use, and we're gonna score as follows. We're gonna score at a quarter of an inch. So quarter. Okay. Then we're gonna score at two and a half. Two and a half. And then we're gonna score at four and three quarters. So four and three quarters. Okay, and those are our score lines. Now again, it's a solid piece of cardstock, so orientation does not matter. We can use the scoreboard, oh, sorry, doggy barking. We can use the scoreboard to um, score this as well, but honestly, for me, it's just as easy because we're just gonna fold it in half to simply line up my corners. It's kind of hard to see when it's black. 
All right, line up my corners, pinch, line up there, pinch, make sure this is lined up, pinch, and then just pinch it all the way through. And that's it. This one we're going to fold that quarter inch inward. Then we're gonna fold again inward that other score and then one more time inward. Okay, and that's going to give us that pocket. Bring in your bone folder. I don't think I said get a bone folder, but I'm sure we all have one handy. And burnish your lines, your folds, nice and burnished. Making sure that it is nice and straight and now nice and flat. And the paper is going to behave just like so. Okay, so there is that base that we're after. And then here is that smaller card. Okay. And that is it for scoring. I told you, super simple, right? Okay, so now we're going to glue this down. We're gonna close it. So to do that, we've got our little um, flap there that we're gonna add adhesive to, like so, and then on the bottom as well, just like that. And then we're gonna glue that down. If anything, Oozes, use your silicone tool to clean up any excess glue. And make sure we have good adhesion there. All right. And now we have our little pocket. Now, if we want to notch this, we could have, and I would have done that beforehand. I mean, you could still probably get in there and do it. Actually, wait, it's not even glued. Let me show you how to do that because I did talk about notching. So this one is notched. So if you wanna notch it, if you like that look, we can do it now. So to do that, we're gonna bring in the ruler and find our center. So the center of this is a little tricky, which is why I love to use my zero ruler. By putting that zero, I know it's kind of hard to see on camera, putting that zero and then it goes and it opens up this way, right? So one, one, two, two, and then all the markings in between. And all I do is kind of go back and forth like this with a zero until it's the same on both sides, which in this case is one and an eighth, it looks like. Yep, one and an eighth. Grabbing my pencil. I can put ooh, one and an eighth, where'd it go? One and an eighth. Using my pencil, I can kind of create a little tick there to show me where my center is. And then I can decide how far in do I want to come. Hang on, open up just a little more. So, hmm, about that, looks good. So I can decide to notch that there. Let me close it back up. And then if you are going to notch that, you'll need to notch your cover as well. So decide which one is your inside cover. Clean that off. Okay. Burnish it down again. Okay, now, which one was my inside cover? Well, you know, I don't, mine are both pretty much the same. Yours might be um, a little bit different. Maybe you're mix and matching. So decide which one you want here for the inside and you're gonna notch that as well. Once again, I'm gonna find my center. In this case, it is one inch. So that's pretty easy because this is a two inch one. And I am simply going to notch that as well. And then that one will go there with that notch as well. I know it's kind of hard to see on black. Do you see it now a little bit better maybe? It's easier to see on this one because that one's a different color. Okay, all right. 
So we've created our notching. Now we can also notch, if you'd like, you can also notch this one here, okay? If it makes it easier. It's pretty easy to pull in and out of, but if you feel like, hey, that kind of goes with that, then you can go ahead and notch that. So again, you would simply bring this half and find your center and notch it. Then you would find the panel that you're gonna put on this one and notch it as well. So the same way we just did that one, okay? This one right here. Okay, easy peasy, that's totally optional. Of course, you do not need to notch it at all. You can just leave it straight and it would look just as pretty, right? Okay. Next, what we need to do is if we're gonna be inking, we need to ink. We need to ink up everything before we adhere it, right? Because then once it's adhered, we won't be able to, to do so. In this case, these are black, so I don't need to ink up any of these right here. None of my black pieces will need inking. All of this will. Again, in this case, this was brown, so I did distress all of my brown edges. But again, totally up to you. So let me get my little ugly plate. And we will ink up really quick. So funny enough, for this week, I had made the announcement um, during our live Saturdays that um, we have a live Saturday sale here on the channel. And so I hope you guys will join us for that. But I had made the announcement that I was gonna be working on another project, which is a um, tag album uh, using the What's Cooking line from Simple Stories. Super fun to have made. Well, it's gonna have two purposes too. It can either be tags or it can be a tag album. And I'm gonna show you how to do both. Uh, again, another Try It Tuesday. So that was the original video that was intended for today. But um, during the sale, um, a whole bunch of folks, of course, wanted to uh, play along and purchase the materials to, to do their own. So I figured, well, they're not gonna have them ready. Uh, you know, in their hands by the time this releases. So yeah, I figured, you know what, we'll do it next week. So fear not if you're watching this and you're wondering, wait a minute, I thought Try It Tuesday was supposed to be the tag album. You're right, but I changed it up so that we could do it together once you've received your supplies. Um, because I was thinking maybe we can even do it as a uh, premiere. So I can be in chat and talk to you guys in case you guys have any questions and we can kind of do it together. So I thought that'd be fun. Okay, see a little bit of distressing really adds to any line. Some colorful ones, you know, I don't really like to um, ink up too much. Uh, I just love them the way they are, like really super happy colors. Not that you couldn't ink them up in happy colors, right? You could choose a pink or a teal or a green, even with this line. But since this had some brown, like that chocolate brown in it, I figure, well, it's lending itself for me to do just this. And since I had it out from doing that one, why not? and we might use it on the next one. So stay put because after this, we're gonna put together that other one. This is another one like a, just a, um, let's just play kind of thing. But really my objective here is to go ahead and do the alchemy one. That's the one I'm dying to do. Not that these are not super fun. And they come together so easy. Okay. Almost done. Again, if you need to um, pause for any reason, then go ahead and do so. Um, but don't worry because we're gonna be putting that other one together too. So you'll have plenty of time to do even two of these with me if you want. But if you don't wanna, if you wanna do two and you're like, well, I'm not done inking because you might have to ink up all of this, right? Um, then you can go ahead and just pause and we'll be We'll resume after that. Or you might not be inking at all. That's totally up to you. 
Okay, let's put this all together because now it's just going to come together super, super quickly. Um, we've already closed the pocket, which I kind of jumped the gun on, but that's okay. <laughs> uh, we already did it, so that's easy. We're going to bring over the large mat and we're going to adhere that here to our base. Now for the sake of speed, I'm going to grab my tape. And this stuff is super strong. I almost took off my fingerprints yesterday. So again, I'm just kind of eyeballing it, making sure that I am not going to impede, right, my flap there. So like so, perfect. Then we're going to bring in the smaller card and we're going to adhere that here. Now remember, this is going to close here. So again, you could choose to bring it more out this way if you want to. Um, you could choose to bring it more inside. I, you know, it all depends on what look you're going for. In this case, I kind of went more in. Let's go a little more out with this one so you guys can see the difference between the two. If you want to measure, by all means, if you want to find your center, nothing wrong with that. Again, I'm going to use my zero ruler and uh, sh it's okay. It's just an airplane. Two and a half is going to be my center on my right. Let's see, two, two and a half. Again, it's kind of hard to see it on black, yes. So two and a half is going to be my center that way. And then this way, nope, let's go with three and a half, almost there. There we go right there. So now I know that my center is right there and I can put an X on it because I am really not going to see that X, right? I'm not going to see any of this. So that's my center. Again, I can kind of, you know, eyeball it and try and put it on there if I want, but I could also just see where I like it. Now I'm going to be gluing it First of all, make sure it's opening this way, right? Don't glue it upside down and do this because then you're going to be very sad. <laughs> make sure it's opening this way. And then I'm going to add glue on three sides on that back panel. So like so. And again, just kind of eyeballing where that X is, lining it up maybe with these dots right here. Oh, it's kind of crooked. Does that look straight? No, it does not. Does that look straight? Yes. No. A little bit more. I think we got it. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so just make sure that this does overlap this. Okay, because that's where we're going to be adding our magnet. Uh, and once I'm happy, I'm just going to kind of press down there. Okay, so like so. Now, we're going to be adding a magnet to the inside of the top flap. So on this small card, okay, we're going to be adding a magnet on the inside of the top flap. So you'll notice it's hidden under here. I know you can't see it, but there's a magnet right there. Now, you don't want to come too close to the edge. Let me get my magnets and I'll show you. And again, we have plenty of magnets available in our online store. These are cool because they come with the little um, sticky backs um, and they have like a negative and a positive. So it tells you exactly what it is, but uh, you don't want to come this close to the edge because when you add your decorative panel, let's say this is the decorative panel, well, that magnet is gonna kind of stick out, you see? So you want to come a little further in, okay? Like so. And again, it doesn't matter whether it's up, down, it doesn't have to be perfectly centered, just kind of, kind of eyeball it, right? So I'm gonna come right about here, how's that? I'm going to test it. Yes, it does come 
onto this flap. That does matter. Make sure that that happens. I'm going to kind of press down on that a bit. And I didn't notice if it was a negative or positive. That was a positive. So let me get a negative now. And the easiest way to do that is to simply pull off your backing. Nope, hang on. Even with my hook tool, I don't want to pull the, uh, the little sticky dot. And all you want to do is drop that there, right? Right on top of the other, they'll self-attract. Close your flap and then press down. And then when you open, you have a perfect placement, okay? And oh, that was close. See, I didn't want to be that close. I could have come in even, no, I'm sorry, I could have gone out a little more to come in this way some more. So to make sure that my cover will cover, which is just like borderline, <laughs> very close. Okay, so we've got that so far, right? We've got our magnetic closure now. That was like probably the hardest thing to do, which as you saw is not hard at all. Okay, now while we give that some time to adhere because maybe you're not using um, um, magnets that have the uh, little sticky dots, maybe you're just adding a bit of glue and allowing them to dry. Let's set that off to the side and work on these while we wait for that. Okay, for these, we're gonna bring in our already angled cut mats. And here's this one, and then here's this one. All right, perfect. We're going to adhere those down. Now, the only tip I do have for you on this one right here is make sure that you have good adhesive here on the bottom because you don't not want that to stick on your whenever you're putting it in your pocket okay so very important that these corners down here are well adhered kind of well, 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 well. That was kind of crooked, hang on. It's not always easy to do that on camera. Hold, let's try again. Hopefully I didn't mess it up. If I did, I'll just cut another base real quick. Easiest way to do it is to start from the top. Again, those angles are perfect. So let them be your guide. Like so. Nope, I still got it wrong. Wow, okay. Hang on. The struggle is real right now. I do not know why I'm so crooked. Okay finally got there. Let me find that other one. This one. Clean up. Any excess glue. Ooh, I might need my eraser for this later. Nope, it's coming off. Good. Come on. Just a little more. Okay. Cool. Alright, now let's work on the other side. Ooh. Hopefully this next one goes better. Jeez Louise. Good way to show you what not to do. Again, making sure we have good adhesive on that bottom. This time I'm gonna stand up, how's that? And I'm gonna try and get in frame. Oh, so much better, see? I shouldn't have, I should have stood up from the beginning. <laughs> Okay, there. Sorry, I was trying not to get my big old head in the way. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with the other two sides of the bookmarks. I 
again because it goes in and out every single time. We do not want it to snag on that bottom. I always use my top as my placement because I know it's perfect. Flip it over. Do it again. Extra glue down there. so and there we go and now hopefully by now your magnets are dry if you have problems with magnets adhering I am going to recommend that you use the cola extra forte uh, from Stamperia this is like the best glue for anything that you need that's heavy duty or metal or you know that you want to stick on forever that's your best friend right there. So I highly recommend that. But in my case, um, we don't need a whole lot because not only are they already adhered, but we're gonna cover them with paper. So those magnets are not going anywhere. Okay. And we can choose where we start. We are going to glue these here. Again, it's kind of hard to see, but kind of maybe bend it so you can see a little better, especially if you're using black. And there we go. We're going to do it again. Now again, on this one, I am going to add a little bit of glue around the magnet to make sure I create a nice pocket for it. So no matter how many times we open and close, it's always going to be well protected. And I'm going to kind of press around that pocket that I created of glue to make sure that paper is well adhered. So even over time, let's say that sticky dot gives out, it won't matter because this is encased now in a little pocket of paper. It will never go anywhere. Okay, easy. Now we're going to bring this and we're going to glue that to the front. Aren't these fun? They're just super fun and easy, but so pretty. How stinking cute, right? Okay, so now we've got our magnetic closure, but we're gonna glue the panels. Again, whether you notched or not, this one or this one. Um, you know, I'm sure I gave you the right measurements, but I think I cut mine short. I sure did. <laughs> it was supposed to be six and three quarters, and I cut it at six and a half, but I gave you the right measurements, so you're good. Yours is good, mine is just a little short, and that's all right, you know what? We're not going to fret over it. We're just going to adhere it. Because we're not going to sweat the small stuff. Half an inch here or there, it's all good. I mean, not even half, I'm sorry, a quarter of an inch. I could just go recut these, but again, we're just doing this one. Well, I'm doing this one more than anything to show you how to make that one. And then we're really going to move on to the one that I want to really create. All right, I'm going to use this bottom here to help me level that off, right? So it looks nice and straight and even at the bottom. My magnet is on the other side. So that's the one that I'm more worried about. And see, it won't be a big deal. Well, actually that one, hmm, nah, it's fine. I could just go recut it, but you know what? No, it's gonna bug me, isn't it? I'll be right back. I'm gonna go recut that. That gives you a chance to catch up. Okay, got it. So that's my old one. This is my new one. That's a better fit. By the way, if that ever happens and you glue it down and you're like, you know what, it just bothers me. You know, paper is the most forgiving craft ever. Well, actually all art and crafting is super forgiving because all you have to do is cut another panel, 
notch it and glue it right on top and nobody will ever know that there was a mistaken or boo-booed panel underneath, okay? Um, I gotta ink this up. Now, if you're wondering why does Maddie use a styrofoam plate, because you might be new here or you haven't seen my other videos, <laughs> I'll tell you why. Um, I don't, I, you know, every time I ink, I do this. I destroy my pads and it irks me to have all that stuff all over my table. And then if you clean it, then you smear ink on your desk and yeah, anyway. So then I got stuck with a bunch of styrofoam plates, which I hate, but I have them. So now I use them for that or I use it for that. And it's easy for me to just tap it in the garbage can whenever, you know, I'm done. And I keep my desk clean. I know. <laughs> it's not pretty. But it's useful. And uh, yeah. And I have to use it because I wish I could actually send you all a uh, styrofoam plate in the mail. Because I have like a hundred of them. And I don't want not even one. But now I'm stuck with them. Okay. I'm going to glue that there. Again, I'm aiming for that bottom to make sure it's leveled here at the top as well. And that was easy. This we can save for something else some other time. Or if we make another smaller one, guess what? We can use that. Okay, now we're almost done. We just need to work on these. Again, this step is optional. But if you are going to be inserting eyelets, then we're going to bring back our crocodile and eyelets. So again, we're going to find center. We're going to grab our ruler and it looks like seven eighths. So see, this is why I love this ruler because there is no way I would do math to find out what seven eighths, what half of this would be. I would never come up with seven eighths. Math is not my forte. All right. So now I can punch my hole right in the middle. It's perfect. Do it again for this one. Now this is my front. Actually both now because that's going to look the same. Yeah, this is my front. Center for this is one and an eighth. Wow, I landed right on it. See what I mean? And of course you guys are lucky enough that I get to do the math for you quote unquote, and then you guys just know where your center is if you're following the exact same measurements. Okay, now to make it easier, I always grab my pencil and just kind of stretch out that paper, not to mention that I struggle with my fingers, so I don't want to fight with it. I just kind of wind that a little bit, and that helps my eyelids to just drop in with minimal work. Okay, there we go. How pretty. And again, now you can pick your favorite trims and add those on there. And you either have a beautiful card to send off to your friends and family or to put in your Etsy shop or, and again, it's gonna take a second because again, we gotta work paper, right? Paper stretches, paper stretches. Where's my ruler? Whenever you first start, it's gonna be a little tight. Just make sure you kinda stretch it out a bit. And then once that is stretched out, you'll be able to slide your tag in there as easy as that. Okay, and a couple of more in and out and it'll be nice and stretched. And then this will fold this way, this will fold this way. And we've got our lovely card slash pocket for our junk journals. Of course, if you notice, this one has a couple of two more things that we didn't do. But again, I'm gonna leave that up to you. Why? Because this is just a scrap piece of paper and this was a rooster that was in this paper line. So if I bring this paper line back, whatever I have left, 
it's an old old bow bunny pad that I have there are some journaling cards and journaling cards work really nice for that see there are some journaling cards here that we can just I think there were some more too hang on no those are the tags that would have been nice for bookmarks too we could have made that pocket a little wider and use those for bookmarks so you see you can alter it depending on your paper line which we're going to do next by the way with the next well i think that was it then yeah oh wait 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 no oh, those are oh look at those that would be cool they're like banners and i think that's the same one right yeah it just repeats so how big is that let's take a look that is that is four inches so it's about the size of this i think that would be too big but those other ones this one here would be cute don't you think these right here would be super cute let's just cut that out and see how it looks one of those most lines come with some kind of a uh, you know journaling cards or ephemera to them so that's a great way to use them now I think that that looks super stinking cute what do you guys think okay so we could use that and use a scrap piece of paper and if you think it's too big you know cut it you know you don't have to use it as it is oh you can even put in a tab here that would be super fun to open it with a tab here all I did was I grabbed that piece of paper and I folded it three times so that this is now super like super thick um, because again it's gonna have a lot of you know playing with this way right um, so I wanted to reinforce it with this one we can even um, add a tab here on the side let's let's do that real quick come on let's do it together just for fun just for a different look okie dokies there's that let me get the tap punch or we could use a whale tail i think i have some already pre-cut yes i do this is our whale tail die set and i have some oh a large one maybe already pre-cut i've done this um i've shared this video with you guys on all the stuff that comes in this pack it's super fun okay that's cute too look at that or do we want a brown because brown we have brown in there too brown looks cool too because it kind of brings in that brown right I think I like brown better and let's see about a medium one that's a small oh hopefully we have a medium brown aha uh -huh, I do this is why I saved my mm, no I like the large one better it makes a better impact yeah let's do that this is why I like when I cut, I cut a bunch of extras and I throw them in here because, you know, it saves me having to go to the, uh, <laughs> to cut them out, right? Not that it takes long. I mean, you just put this down and grab a scrap piece of paper to coordinate. We could have even done a pink one or a green one or whatever we wanted to, but we lucked out because there's a brown one and it looks like it's even been inked let's give it a little more inking and you know what this one is is a single-sided paper so when it opens that's gonna look ugly so I'm gonna grab a piece just the size and back it up not only for that but for stability and you know what this could even become another pocket if you really wanted it to you could that would be yet another one let's cut a piece This one is three. 
this was a three by four. Sorry, my guillotine is behind me. Oh, did I go a little short? We can trim it. It's no big deal. Okay, it's all good. It's just a quick, quick trial here. Ow, fingerprints. Oh, let's do it this way. Because again, I'm gonna have to trim it just a smidge. Oh, am I not? Maybe it was my imagination. Maybe it's right on the money. No, I was right. Have to trim it just as well. No, not really. That goes on the inside. So we won't even see that. This we will see. So let me trim here. Just a sliver. Re-ink it. Okay. And now we're gonna glue that there we're going to glue this here. When it opens up, it'll still be pretty. Oh, we forgot to distress that side. See the little details sometimes. Okay. Now we're ready. Yes, now we're cooking with gas. I'm actually going to glue this down first so that I know how far to come in. And again, this is a much bigger front the knot. And the way that I do my whale tails is I glue half of it first. I go to the little dip there. By gluing one side, I can pinch and make sure it looks straight. It's not, see? So I'm going to kind of now do that. Once I know it's good, then I open up this side and now I adhere the other panel to that first one. Perfect, and now we're gonna glue that there and we've got yet another super cool little look and we can you know add whatever word sentiment happy birthday whatever it is that we want I'm gonna glue this all the way but again you can get super creative and make that into a pocket or all kinds of oh we didn't glue all the way there Maddie stop talking I'm doing crazy stuff guys sorry don't do what I do <laughs> just watch me <laughs> watch me and then do Sorry, totally distracted. And I'm gonna come about here. I think that's good. I'm gonna use my lines to line that up, open it up. Yep, perfect, no glue on the back. And yay, yet another look. Now we've got a whale tail to open it and it closes. So now we've got two different looks with just a piece of paper and with a whale tail. Okay, are we done? We're done playing and kind of going through the basics, right? We know how to put that together. I'm gonna clean up and then I'm gonna come back and we're gonna do the alchemy together, which is the one I really want to get to, uh, to do because that line is gorgeous. Not that these are not pretty, of course they are, they're fun, but that alchemy, oh, I can't wait. All right, let's clean up. Okay, I've got my pieces cut out from the Gorgeous Alchemy, and I'll show you where I got them in case you want to do the exact same thing. I have minimal waste. I mean, like this is what I have left from what I've done, so great way to maximize paper as well. Um, this one was cut out from this same page right here, and you'll see that in multiple places. So this one is going to be my cover for the inside here. Then I cut from that same one, I'll come back to that in a second, from the same one I cut out my two um, covers for the pocket for the bookmark. And it's perfect of course because it brings in that teal so it's going to look really pretty. Then let's go back to this. This is one of the journaling cards here. I marked the pages for us. That is this journaling card right here. And so what I've done, I have changed the size and I'll go over that in a second. I've changed the size of the, here, actually, let's do it now. This card now is now bigger. So you can adjust it. As I mentioned, you can play around with the sizes. I've adjusted to accommodate that journaling card. So it's going to be that much bigger. It could be smaller too, right? 
but that's where I got that. Just fell in love with it because it says creativity on it. Isn't that gorgeous? Okay, we did those already. This, I got, oh, actually, let's jump to this one instead. This one is this card right here with the astrolabe. And what I did was I used the, sorry, we're going to be doing that side. I used the back of this one to create the backing for that. And then finally, the bookmark is this bookmark right here with the owl. This one, I cut it out. And then again, using my leftovers, that is this paper again, I went ahead and cut a um, another piece to kind of just match that. It's just for the back, it's not a big deal, it's just a mat. I mean, we could have not done it at all. So, um, so that's gonna be the back to that. And that's it, that's all that I've used. I mean, we're still got all kinds of fun stuff to come back and add and decorate with. I mean, look at these ginormous um, tags and tickets and labels. Oh, one of those labels would be so pretty too. So we'll come back and play some more. But all I have left from all of that is just this. And again, we can still use these to do all kinds of pulls and yeah, whatnots. So the most important thing I wanted to point out is the fact that I did change the size to accommodate my paper line for the tags, I think for the bookmark and for this. So you can change it up depending on what your paper line um, asks for, right? Or the sizes. I did kind of hesitate between going with this one and let me show you because there's another option these so those would have fit pretty perfect like right there wouldn't they uh it's pretty much that same size look it would have been perfect but i wanted to show you more importantly than that that you can just change it up if you need to accommodate your paper line so now let's put this one together okay fun part we're gonna put this together do we want to notch this? Let's notch it. We've done the other ones. Might as well do this one. I forgot already what I had said earlier. Okay, there we go. Oh, not on that side, Maddie. On this side. Wait. Oh, no, we're good. Yeah, that's the outside. This is the inside. So we're going to notch this. And then we're going to notch one of these. Again, these do have orientation, so I got to pay attention to that. Which one do I like for the front cover? They're both beautiful. Let's do that one's more interesting, I think. So we'll notch this one. Oh, I guess I should have marked it, but since I didn't, I'll just do this. I need to notch a little more. No, that's good. Oh, you know what? We could go a little deeper. How about like so? Yeah, that's better. Okay, so we've got that notched. And then while we're doing that, we should consider if we're going to notch this one too, right? Because we haven't done that with any of the other ones. And over time, as I mentioned, paper should stretch. So... So this should go in and out see a lot better now that the paper has stretched so that's not really an issue but hmm, let's you know what let's do it because it's a different look and then that way we can look at it and if we love it great and if we don't well then we don't do it again <laughs> on the next one. Oh, because i want to make some more i'm thinking of changing um the size all together um, by shrinking everything down and maybe making a smaller one. So maybe with some leftovers or something, that'll be fun. Okay, let's work on notching this. Again, gonna make sure we're opening to the right side. Going to find center, which is two in this case. This is a four inch one. Okay. 
notch that. Like so. And then we can do this one as well. Let's just kind of eyeball it. How's that? Make sure it's straight. Oh, which side actually? Because I was looking at both sides. That side gorgeous. But if we're going to journal on it, this is probably going to be a better side to do that. If we're just, and even if we're mounting a photo, I think that this side has more of a pop than this one. This one's more neutral. They're both gorgeous though. It's so hard, but let's just do it. We can make another one and do it the other way if we want. We've got plenty of paper. We barely use two sheets and just some elements. So we've got plenty. Is that deep enough? I think so. Let's see. Yeah, that's good. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right, so now we have decided that we're going to notch both. And now all we have to do is start to put this together the same way we did the other one. Nothing has changed. Sure, the sizes are a little bit different, but that's about it. Uh, just the one size, I should say, the card, right? Nothing else has changed. I'm trying to think of what other paper line... I would like to use. What do you guys think? What are you using? I love to know. Of course, when you make yours, you make sure you post it in our Facebook group. If you're not part of our Facebook group, you definitely want to go in and join. It is Spectrum Art Creation Friends, and it is just a great place to um, be surrounded by a crafting artsy community um, and also to be able to ask questions post your makes and participate in challenges because we have new challenges every month uh, actually we have extended them now oh you know these could also be pockets you know that hmm. see I mean there's so much room for pockets these could become pockets too so keep that in mind um, there is, um, there are multiple challenges with giveaways happening every month in which we challenge you to maybe a theme like Valentine's Day, um, or a, maybe a company. Um, we've done three quarter design graphic 45. We've done, oh my goodness, hunky dory. Um, this month we're doing, um, Tim Holtz. Uh, so, you know, another great way to be inspired to create. And I know sometimes we get into that funk where we're like, oh, I want to make something, but I don't know what to use. And in this case, you will definitely know you'll have, you know, some oh, look how beautiful that side is. It's is so cool. Oh, well, we can mix and match them, too, if we wanted to. Right. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be kind of funky. You know what? I forgot to ink up my edges. Oh, I got so excited. That's okay. We'll do this one without inking. And then that way we can also see that look as well. It's all good. And yeah, let's mix and match just because it's fun. It doesn't have to be uniform. It doesn't have to be anything, guys. Creativity is about having fun. Art is about creating and nothing else. You do not have to follow any one particular thing. If um, something changes, then you just go with the flow. You just go with the flow. You do not fret over it because that doesn't make it fun. Most of us use art as a means of um, escaping, right? Of releasing stress, anxiety, um, whatever the challenges may be that you are encountering or situations. Look how pretty that side is too. Um, so whenever you are crafting, do not, do not sweat the small stuff because that is going to kill your creativity. Number one, you'll find it stifling. Um, you'll even get to the point where you're like, oh, I don't even want to, you know, start something and, you know, because you're being too hard on yourself. When you create, you should be creating for yourself for nothing else but for you. Nothing. 
Nobody. You're not there to impress anyone. You're not there to meet anyone's expectations. You are there for you, for your journey. So always keep that in mind, please. Because this paper is already so beautiful. You don't even, oh, look at that side. Oh, it's so hard. It is so hard to choose. But um, yeah, so anyway, join the challenges in the Facebook group because they're super fun. Not only do you get inspired to create, but it's fun to see what everybody else makes. And then, of course, you might actually win a prize because most of our giveaway, most of our, excuse me, our um, challenges have giveaways just because we want to encourage you to create. Oh, and by the way, it's they're not about um, competing. So again, see, we we really, really try to take that that whole stress. You know what? I forgot the magnet. I was so busy talking. I forgot the magnet. Oh, Maddie. Oh, Maddie. Can we still get in there? I think so. I think we can. Let's see. If it's too late, we're going to practice the other method, which is what? Yeah, I'm not even going to mess with it. The other method that I had mentioned to you guys is simply grab another piece of paper. No one will ever be the wiser that you messed it up. So I'm going to go cut another one of these. Ooh, look. That's so pretty, too. Oh, and this side's pretty. Mmm. Choices. All right, let me go cut another piece of this and I will uh, hide my magnet. So I'm glad it kind of happened because, you know, that's that's how we learn. Okie dokes, as easy as that. There we go. That's the leftover still. And this will go right above that and nobody will ever know. All right, let's get our magnets. Again. The no stress factor, right? We don't sweat the small stuff. Where did my magnet go? There it went. It's stuck onto the next one. Let go. Let go. Let go. Okay. Use our hook tool. Remove our backing there. Okay. And again, we just kind of want to gauge. This one's got plenty, so it doesn't really matter. And actually, by having um, this piece, it lets me know just how much room I have for that other magnet, okay? So we're going to adhere this one now. No stress, no stress, no stress, no stress at all. None, zero, zilch. Nobody's allowed to stress. If something happens, it's an opportunity for you to add a little border. I mean, we didn't even have to cut a whole panel here. We could have honestly just cut a little strip, right? Or maybe one of the embellishments, those circles, that would have looked cool too. So, you know, again, don't look at it as a negative. Look at it as a way to change it up, to add something. Again, making sure that that's really nice and in that pocket of glue and paper. Okay, so that concludes that little mishap. Perfect. Again, we can use our ruler and find our center, or we can also just kind of look at it like so if i kind of center it here how will it look let's try and pinch that close that and do that yeah that works so let's do it that way you know what let me burnish this a little bit more so that that paper so 
glue it stays shut like that see it was kind of opening up and the reason why is because that paper wasn't very well creased all right we're going to glue this on three sides and in this case my tag is not so wide so i know i have plenty of room to slide in and out so i can be a little bit more generous also with my glue just kind of spread it more so it's got more bite to it. Again, the pocket's not going anywhere, but I'm just kind of using the tip to spread my glue. That's all I'm doing. Oh, almost dropped it. And I'm going to stand up so I can see it. And I see that's pretty centered. love it you can see some text back here so pretty i told you i was super excited to to do this one and now you see why so that was a positive let's find a negative and just kind of let it self-attract by dropping it on there pulling back our little cover Pressing it into place, lifting gently, and now we can add our panels without making any further boo-boos. Okay, look at that side. Ooh. Oh, I think I'm going to change it up. I'm just going to mix and match everything. And again, see, this is a perfect example of what I said in the beginning. Use your scraps. If you mix and match... It would look so cool. It just nothing matches. It's all all over the place. And it's cool because every flap that you open now is an adventure. Everywhere you look, it's totally different. And of course, some paper lines just kind of lend themselves for stuff like this, such as this one. It's just beautiful, right? All right, we're going to close that. Again, I'm going to burnish that down a little bit more just to fold the paper more. And now we're going to add this blue one here because I think that blue one just looks great. I mean, it's like a teal, excuse me, just brings out those little pops of teal there and on these leaves right here. But oh my gosh, that side is also gorgeous, right? How pretty. It's easy to work with really pretty lines. Now, if you do not have a um, paper line, remember you can always make your own by adding your papers, doing some stenciling, some stamping. We could do another one like that, that'd be fun. But I was telling you that I think, I think graphic 45 might be the way to go on this next one. I don't know, I don't know. It's a tough choice. Oh, how great. Look at that. All right, now let's work on these. Now, because these are done from the company, I have to work them a little different. We're going to go ahead and adhere these. So again, if you if you purchase this paper line from us and you are doing this, or if you have it in your stash and you're following along, we're going to have to work this one just a little different because we can't use our angle cutter right our precision sax tool because the angle has already been cut for us so what i'm gonna do is just line it up like so and then i'm going to use their angles to cut and hope that my back lines up it should but nothing is perfect right because i kind of hand cut those so i'm going to give myself a little bit of room there and there that's pretty even right and then hopefully this one will line up and it does there you go if not i could have trimmed it a bit but it lined up so no worries there all right we're gonna add our glue on this one and oh i just got sapped <laughs> I have some static buildup. It has still been chilly here in Florida. Um, so 
you know what I think we have too much up here I'm gonna trim just a smidge off the top there I think that looks a little bit better and then we're gonna do the same thing with this one here again because they gave us the angle we gotta kind of flow with what they've made right oh but how pretty is that and you do not have a back you do not have to have a backing another thing that you can also do is if you want the person to or yourself if this is for you to be able to um to journal on the back you could just add some tea dyed paper or some other paper on the back right and then oh sorry guys hang on one second sorry sorry the store phone um you could also add that now this i just noticed i cut it upside down i did i sure did <laughs> the text is upside down see there is an orientation so i'm gonna recut that you know what oh no even if i put it that way it's still upside down hmm hmm Yep, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to trace it. I could trace it on anything, but this time let's make sure that that's too short. Where's that other piece of scrap? This one. Oh, but this one has orientation. Well, actually, the text going sideways is not bad. The text upside down is bad. And I love that piece right there. Yeah, we could do that. We could totally do that and make it a blue side or mm, this is so pretty look at that it's almost perfect oh yeah i think that might be awesome and it's not really orientation specific it's going every which way and i love the grunge so to do that all i'm going to do and this is what i did the first time by the way in case you're wondering i simply grabbed the the bookmark that came in the paper pad i traced it and that was it and then i cut it out i hand cut it out so we're gonna do that again oh boy i hope i can see my lines yes i think i can it's kind of dark I'm going to use this yellow line here as my line and let's see how that fits how the width is yeah that's good that's perfect okay and then I'm going to switch to my fussy cutting scissors because it makes it easier these are my detail scissors and not only are they super sharp but they are perfect of course they're made for detail cutting which makes your turns and your angles and all that fun stuff super easy to do like so okay let's try that and see yes I think so okay so first what I'm gonna do is once again to make sure that it kind of lines up we pray that it's gonna line up like this one is I'm going to cut here Again, this is a little bit trickier than using the precision tool, which guarantees us a perfect fit. There's no perfect fit for this because we're kind of trying to line it up with what they've done. Okay, so something like that. And then, fingers crossed, this will line up pretty decently. And it does. Not perfect. Actually, I don't like that. Hang on one second. I just noticed there's a little bit of a bubble here. And see how close you can get with these like little little tiny slivers which is perfect and that lines up a little bit better yeah, perfect again it's hand made guys not machine made and I've seen some machine made stuff that even I have to wonder who calibrated that machine right because <laughs> some stuff you're like wow I have bought like boxes and whatnots um, that literally there was glue everywhere i bought 
you know, shoes that, well, I didn't buy them, but I've looked at shoes where the glue is just like everywhere. You can see the glue and it's so awful looking, you know? Um, so nothing is perfect. If you stop and look at everything all around, nothing is perfect and it shouldn't be because we're not. Nobody needs that kind of pressure, right? And now we've got a double-sided mark as well. Yay! Okay, so that's one way to kind of work with those elements that come in your collections. That's one way to work around them. So now let's find center here is one and three eighths. Again, that means nothing to you unless you're using the exact same um, paper line. But I'm just kind of talking more out loud than anything else. <laughs> and then here we've got and again, that's the beauty of this rule. One and 15 sixteenths. Can you imagine that? There's no way I would ever figure that out. Oh, and we could have used even that little thing to guide us for center, right? So let's go about, oh, wrong size. Let's go about here. And here. Yes, I did use the right side. All right, we're gonna loosen up that paper some so we're not fighting with it. And just like that, we have made two full projects from scratch, guys. How awesome is that? I'm telling you, these are gonna come together like super simple. Oh, look at that little owl, he's just adorable. Which side do we want out, that one? Well, that's kind of cool. Or hang on, let's reverse it. Let's reverse it. Or that one. They both look great. It doesn't matter which one you use. <laughs> and then let's do it again for this one. And get our eyelid in there. And then this one's a lot looser because again, I guess I had mentioned the pocket is much larger than the tag. And there we go. How lovely, right? Super easy to make. And again, we can now come back and do all kinds of other embellishments because we've got all kinds of super cute things to create a tab if we want to for this one, like we have for these two. Um, we can even use our um, punch and create the other kind of tab. Let's do one with this. Let's do one real quick so I can show you what I mean because we have not only the whale tail, but we also have a tab punch, which I just used in the video before this one to show you how to create mini little file. Whoa, everything is dinging. <laughs> I forgot to silence all of my To create little file folders, right? We did the mini file folders and those were super fun. Come on, move over. Don't hog it up. So which side do we think? This side or this side? Mm, they're both beautiful. And I could just use it like this, by the way. So, you know, not this big, but I could just use, you know, a piece and just cut it and then glue that. But let's give it a little pizzazz, why don't we? So yeah, we made some adorable little file folders, um, a, an organizer, a wall organizer, but it's they're like this big. They're so cute for journals. So if you missed that video, go check it out. So all I've done is I folded my paper in half. Mm, which side? I'm thinking this side. It's got more of the teal. And then I'm gonna slide it down just a little bit like that so I can see a little bit of the see that a gap there and then i'm gonna punch and then that will create us a double tab like so and now we can glue this beautiful beauty right there look at that let's do it it's 
since we've got it, let's do it. But if not, remember, you also have all of these other elements here that you can use. So like, oh, imagine these little number tiles. <gasps> I might love that. I might have to do that instead, or I might have to make more. <laughs> because look, isn't that fun? Just to have a number on there. And we can cut these two together. Here's what I mean, I'll show you. Again, it's better to show than to try to explain, right? And there's smaller ones too, if you need smaller ones. But we can even cut these together, these tiles, and fold that in half, like so, and then glue that, open up, on here, right? Oh, even, hey, why do we have to go in the center? We don't have to go in the center. We can go up here. And then this will be our little thing that opens and on the inside, it'll have a different number. How stinking fun is that? So we've got that choice. We've got this choice. Let's see what other choices we've got. Cause again, it's all about creativity and play. By the way, that reminds me, if you are enjoying this, please do give it a thumbs up. We greatly appreciate it. It helps the channel to grow. It helps us to bring you even more content. Look at that. That's perfect. We could just, again, cut that in half, right? I mean, cut it double like this and then grab that folded and it'll say books. <sighs> cool, right? Oh, look at these little, little pieces here. Those would be perfect, or these. Any of those will work. Um, well, if we wanted to, we can even grab one of these and fold that in half, right? That would look super cool or fold it this way. So this will be the front and this will be the inside. Does that make sense? So you'd cut it to face that way. You could use that. Um, of course, this is the, cause this is the free page. This is the freebie. This is the front cover. This is the actual page. You've got the rounds. Remember we talked about those? Oh, look at that moth. That would be gorgeous right there. You could use your circle punch or hand cut that one. And then, oh, there's even more here. Look, it's loaded. Or we could do like we did here, you know, and cut out. <laughs> look at the cat, I love them. Or the owl, that would look cool. The bee, the flower, well, we already have a flower. Let's not do that. Any of those would look cool. Even the key, oh my gosh, a key to open it. That would be amazing amazing and they're already double-sided on this one not this because this is again the freebies on the back cover and there's rice paper to go with this line we have chipboard to go with this line there's all kinds of stuff oh chipboard would be so good because it's nice and you know already thick right sturdier i should say but now we've got a decision to make and what a tough decision because i love that number you know what let's do something different because i use this a lot let's go with the number what do you guys say? Oh, even that side. Oh, look how cool that is. Oh, guys, sometimes the hardest decision is just what to use, right? That's sometimes just the hardest thing is just to figure out what we're going to be working with. Hang on. Let me add more here. I don't know how far deep I'm going to go. Let's see. If we fold it this way we can put it up here i want to make sure i don't go too far out of this and i don't cover my word creativity and then i am straight is that straight almost a smidge too much there clean up before it dries okay good open it wait don't go and then glue this other side here and now we have another cool tab so again use your paper line you can even do circle punches out of your paper line and fold the, that in half right like we did with this so there we go and we can still come back and do even more decorating because we've got all kinds of super fun stuff 
but now we've got our little tab that will open up to reveal our super gorgeous even the little owl all right i hope you guys have enjoyed this i hope that you will give it a try i hope that you share your creations in our facebook group don't forget to check out both of our online stores we have two stores to serve you we have spectrumartcreations.com and we also have spectrum art creations on etsy and both stores hold different items so be sure to check out both because there's hundreds thousands of amazing products in both of those stores of course if you enjoy um, shopping for crafting supplies and being able to see them live and in person then be sure to join us for our weekly live sales here on youtube where we actually come and we show you the product live we talk to you live we um yeah we play games and giveaways and have a whole lot of fun you get to meet a whole bunch of new friends and community um and then of course uh, as I mentioned, join the Facebook group. Make sure you guys answer the questions when you're requesting to join. Because if you don't, the um, assistant, the Facebook, I guess, group assistant automatically uh, declines your request. So it's set up to decline anyone who does not answer the questions. So I never even get to see them. So please make sure that you answer the questions when requesting to join the group. It is a private exclusive group where everybody can feel safe and share what they're working on and ask questions and all that fun stuff. And then of course, if you have enjoyed this content, do not forget that we have Spectrum Art Creations Academy where you get tons more perks, exclusive content, workshops, one-on-one -on -one live uh, classes with us. Um, every month we have different classes. We have craft nights where we come and craft together. Everyone gets on the panel. We get to be more one-on-one -on -one exclusively. Um, you also get um, things like game nights. You get all kinds of other things like loyalty badges and custom emojis. Uh, so yeah, make sure that you guys check out Spectrum Art Creations Academy because for just one flat monthly fee starting at $9.99 you get access to all of the classes um, there is no you know per class fee you get access to everything that I just mentioned um, and then the fun thing is that you also get access to all of the classes that have already passed as well so you have lots of great content that you're not able to see currently on our channel because it's private and exclusive Hope to see you there. I hope you check it out. I'll leave a link at the end of this video for you to find out more about the Academy. And of course, be sure to check out this other video for more inspiration and fun. We will see you all there. Thanks for joining us. Bye.